In this tutorial, we're going to build an SQL dashboard using live data from a MySQL database, similar to what can be seen here. The first thing we want to do is create a new MySQL database and insert the data that you can download from the website into it. So I start MySQL from the command line. I recommend not use, normally allowing root access, but this is just for local development. I create my database ystock. I then load my ystock.sql file using the pipe. I've now created the database and filled it with three tables of information. To check that the data made it in, I log into MySQL, I show what tables exist, we can see there's an OHLC quote and stock table. The stock table contains one row for each stock, so Amazon, Google, IBM. The OHLC table contains the open, high, low, close price for each day. I press Ctrl C to stop it early. I next load SQL dashboards. As you can see, it brings up by getting started and the offer to launch a demo. We don't want to do that. Instead, go to server, add server, and add your MySQL server. Specify the database as YStock and the username and password. When I test it, it shows that the connection works. So I say OK to add it to the list of servers. Now that we've added the connection to MySQL database, SQL dashboards can now query and return results. So the first thing we're going to do is add a data table which simply displays the raw table result. Once I added the data table a new window appeared and the control panel can now be typed into. So within the text box I type in my SQL query. So here I select all of the stocks and they're displayed as a table. I now want to restrict this for now to just Amazon stocks. So I select star from stock where sim equals Amazon. Next we want to add a chart. I can either go to actions and add the name chart or I can click on the quick icons to add it there. So here I've added a time series chart. Again I go to the control panel and enter my SQL query. Depending on the type of chart or table that you have selected to draw there's a very specific SQL format. So here I'm selecting a date column and a numeric column. Because I select a time series chart, the chart is now plotted of the values over time. Next I want to add a candlestick chart. So I adjust the layout slightly by just dragging and dropping windows. I go add candlestick. So this is a candlestick or also known as an open high low close chart. This also has a very specific format. All these formats are detailed on the website. They're also built into the software. So again I rearrange my windows. If I drop one on top of the no another it creates this tab series. So I've entered an incorrect query. I hover over the info box to see what the format should be. It tells me that there should be an open, high, low, close column. So I'm going to modify my query to now select all of the columns for Amazon. And you can see I now get my candlestick chart, but there's uh, far too many data points. I want to restrict this to the last 60 or 90 days. So I edit my SQL query, I press Control Enter, and it updates to now only show in this case the last 90 days. If in the window I want to set a title, so up here where it says candlestick, I simply go to title, type in the new title that I want and press enter. It will instantly be updated. I now have some nice graphs and tables for the Amazon stock. This is good but it's not very generic or useful if a user wants to look at a different stock in particular. Next we're going to look at how we can use forms to make charts dynamic.
If I add another data table, move it to the left slightly because I'm going to have a long table, and add my query to select the distinct stock symbols from the stock table. You can see that there's a small number of sims. I would like to let the user choose from this symbol list. To allow user interaction in SQL dashboards, we use forms. So first click Add Form. Within the form, we can have a number of components. In this case, I'm going to add a drop down select. So I add the drop down component. That gives me a drop down box with a label. I paste the SQL query in and that will provide the list of stock symbols that we previously seen. I, I had to change the server. It had the incorrect server. I close that original table. Adjust to make the form smaller. I want to change this label to be more sensible. So again, I go to the label box, type in the new entry and press enter. It's instantly updated. And then set the title. You'll notice I can select the stock on the form. However, so far it has no effect. The key here is the key that we can then use in other queries to allow dynamic update. So I had key 1. If I replace my Amazon with key 1 and set the query, you can now see that it's changed to cat within that data table. And as I select different values, it updates. I can do the same with the other charts. So replace Amazon with dollar symbol key 1. And again, Amazon with dollar symbol key 1. So this works both for single values and for lists of values. Now when I change my stock, both the chart and the table get updated in real time. The next thing I want to look at is how to display a table and have dynamic highlighting of certain rows within the table. So again I go to add table, I specify my SQL query. In this case it's pulling the latest quotes and displaying the move from the opening to the current point in time. And you can see that there's small values. Currently I'm not inserting live data so you won't see any movement. But I want to update this so that we have coloured rows. On that movement column, I want to adjust the value to be, instead of being a number, to be the colour itself. So I use a case statement to say if it's positive, then green, else if it's less than zero, red. Finally, else, plain white. And once I set the query, you can see that the move column has updated to say green and red. Finally, to cause the colouring to take effect, I rename the column from move to a special SD underscore BG colour. There's also an SD underscore FG colour. And the value in that column is no longer shown, but it affects the colour displayed within SQL dashboards. Finally, I go to view full screen, hide my form editor, and I begin to rearrange the windows to present the data exactly how I want. You can see how quickly and easily I can rearrange these and change the layout. Actually, one last thing I want to do is add one other table to show the live quote prices coming in. So I quickly add a time series table, drag it over the top to cause a tab, specify my SQL query with the key in it and press select. You can see that there's no prices so far for the stock MMM. What I now want to do is get the new quotes.sql data and insert it into our database one row at a time so you can see it live updating. So I open my new quotes within my SQL workbench. I'm going to move it to the side 
so that you can see the dashboard running. And I'm going to press Control and Enter to run each row, and you'll see that the livestock movement and the time series graph update instantaneously. Finally, we will save our dashboard as a file. So here I specify ystock.das. Once it's saved, I can close, I can reopen the file, and I'll come back and query the database again and show that live information with the exact same layout and queries that you previously set. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to launch a similar dashboard, you can do this from SQL dashboards under the help menu. There's a MySQL example that looks exactly like this, containing some of what we've seen before. It also has multiple workspaces within one desktop. It has a few different chart types and shows a few different themes. As I said to run it, go to help, demo, and my SQL Yahoo Finance dashboard. Give it a try now.